Jeff Beers with the Yoda Guy here. This is day two of the manual transmission swap on a 2002 Toyota Tacoma. Um, this truck has the 3.4 liter V6 5EZ FE supercharged. That's not really relevant to the swap, but you know, it's got it. Um, the transmission had some failures and we decided to get rid of the automatic transmission and do a, a manual transmission swap. So. Here we have an R150F transmission that's gonna be going in this truck. Um, got it on the bench here about ready to disassemble it because I'm probably gonna be putting in, well I am going to be putting in new bearings and new synchronizers in this thing. So basically this thing will be pretty much brand new and we're all done. Um, that will be going in. One thing that we have here, we have the manual transmission engine harness and manual transmission engine ECU from a donor vehicle. Um, the engine harness and the ECU on this will not be ne technically compatible with the manual transmission because there's no sensor inputs for the ECU or the engine harness on the automatic for them to be to, to be aware that it has that component installed inside of it. So we don't want to we want to be able to pass emissions. We don't want to check engine light or nothing like that. So we got a manual transmission ECU and harness. These things are a bit difficult to source together unless you have a donor vehicle searched all around and had to order this harness from Boston, Massachusetts from a junkyard and then this ECU came to California uh, off of a, another junkyard vehicle. Um, been checking the compatibility, made sure that the engine harness connects right into the, uh, the ECU. We have two extra connectors here. Um, went over to the truck to figure out where those went and those basically plug right into here behind the dash because there's your factory ECU right there. Um, these guys right here is where that, those two pins would plug into. These are the two little connectors that come off the engine harness that we'll be replacing. Um, while we're in here, we're taking a look at the torque or the transmission tunnel. We got out the, um, the automatic transmission bracket and everything, the, the whole center console piece. Took that all out. Um, so we have a donor manual transmission, basically, um, the, the cover, the dust boot and everything that we're gonna put here. Now looking at it, the holes don't really line up perfectly, um, which is okay because I can just go through a grinder and kind of open this up just in case. So I'm probably gonna wait till the transmission is in to make those cuts um, because I can have the shifter off and everything and I can see exactly where those shifters are gonna be coming up through. Uh, um, so, and then the mounting holes for these are not the same so the body is different on between a manual and automatic, but just drill some holes. We'll probably throw in some uh, self tappers in there or something like that to hold that in there. Another thing that we bought is we have the center console piece out of a manual transmission. This thing is OEM and it was only like 30 bucks. So pretty sweet deal for that thing. So we got a, that, this piece here, which has the manual shifter boots that come up through it there. So that's gonna be a direct bolt on, match it up. Looks like all of our mounting pull, point bolts to the normal center console. Um, they're all gonna be perfect. So we don't have to worry about adapting those items together. Um, I got the automatic transmission is out. Uh, there's the A340F. Then here's the automatic transmission shifter assembly that we got rid of. That guy's no longer in there. Um, so that's garbage as of right now. Um, after we got out the manual trans or the automatic transmission, notice that the rear main seal had a little bit of leaking going on. So this is a prime opportunity to replace the rear main seal. I'm gonna pick up an OEM uh, rear main seal and replace that while I have everything apart. Uh, another thing to make this swap complete is the rear trans mount. The, this is an automatic rear trans mount. This is the manual rear trans mount. If you look, if you can see this here, but there's manual, automatic. You can see their profiles are a little bit different. Um, automatic, manual. So the bolt holes right here, these two points, the transmission goes are different. Automatic is a little bit narrower and a little bit um, not as tall. The manual is a little bit wider and a little bit taller. So it, the, the mounting plate though, the, the, the beam or the bar that goes across there, the bracket, that seems to be identical but the actual physical rubber mount, you're gonna need uh, one off of a manual transmission to make that work. So, um, other thing we have out, we got the drive lines out. While you have the drive lines out, go through the, um, oh, sorry, flashlight in the way. Go through and articulate each of the, the U-joints to make sure they're all free and um, don't have any free play or any binding or whatever going on. If you do find that, go ahead and replace these U-joints when you can. Um, I would replace them with Spicer 
Spicer U joints are the biz natch. Um, they are awesome. They are an OEM supplier, so that drive line was most likely made. Oh, I think I can't remember if this one was made by Spicer or by Toyota. You can usually tell by the by the U joints. Okay, so those are Spicer, Spicer, Toyota. So this has Toyota U joints and Spicer U joints. Toyota does make their own U joint. Well, I don't know if they make their own, but they have their own style. I should say so. Be sure to check that out. Over here, we have where the, um, this is basically the spot for where the clutch master cylinder is gonna go. This little cavity is open. I've already kind of measured it. There's a place for the master cylinder to go. You can kind of almost see a dimple in the fender well where the bolt holes would normally go, but the cab isn't drilled for it, nor is there thread holes or anything like that for it. So that had me a little concerned, but I got the, um, donor vehicle clutch pedal assembly here you can see there's the two studs right there that is where the clutch master cylinder is going to bolt through and where this thing bolts onto the firewall um one thing about it too though is that there's this upper mounting bolt point there where it goes up underneath the dash and guess what this truck has that point it has that bolt hole so what i'm gonna have to do is i need to come up underneath the dash and probably gonna have to remove this dash panel i've kind of already removed the carpet and stuff there but basically right in that spot there, and then you can see the, the mounting point bolt hole right there. You can see it? Yeah, right there. That's where this upper tab's gonna go. So if I need to get this, these, I need to get be pretty close on these mounting tab bolt holes. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm probably just gonna cut off these studs or pound them out if I can. And then I will be um, basically temporarily mounting this up into the dash and then I'm gonna mark the location of where these bolt holes are. Then I'm gonna pop out the drill and drill some holes and uh, get that thing to fit through there. Um, the other thing that I will be doing is I need to make a hole, a bore hole for where the clutch pedal, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the push rod, clutch pedal push rod would go through. Um, so then all that stuff should fit. So, oh, I'll show you too some clutch assembly components while well, I got you here. So, here is a flex plate, automatic transmission, thin sheet of metal. This is what are, what's on automatics. Um, this is a flywheel. Uh, remember, an automatic transmission is a torque converter. Pretty much takes place of what a flywheel does in certain ways. It, they're kind of close to the same thing, but not really. But in automatics, you have flex plates. You no know, transmissions, you have flywheels. Um, so we got the high mass L LCE engineering flywheel. Um, got that stuff out and checking out the mounting point bolt holes. All the bolt holes look look like they fit. Um, I gotta check to see if the clutch disc and pressure plate all match up. So I got the LCE Engineering Dual Comp uh, Clutch Kit. Basically, this one has dual composite materials on it. So one side, see it's all shiny and metallic kind of looking. This side's really aggressive, really grabby. So it's, it's gonna be... Um, now there's not very much slip in it, but both sides are not the same material. So one side, metallic, really grabby. Um, the other side, just a normal clutch disc material. So this is going to be our partially streetable setups where one side is gonna allow a little bit of slip for like normal driving conditions. The other side, no slip, that thing's gonna grab. So when you kind of combine the two, you get a little bit of best or best of the both worlds. High horsepower grabbing abilities, the other one's normal, kind of driving, stuck in traffic, just riding the clutch a little bit to get things going. Um, so we got all that there. Man, and I think that's it for now. Um, so I'm gonna get going on that clutch pedal. I'm gonna start rebuilding this transmission, get this flywheel and everything mounted. And so far, everything is looking like it should be a direct bolt on. So yeah. Um, that should be it for today, and uh, I'll check in with you guys later, give you some more updates. All right, peace.